Take a look at this image. This image might look like a regular rope bridge. But did you know these are the living bridges of Meghalaya? What do you think make these bridges living? Similarly, have a look at this particular image. So, here we see structures growing out from the water to the outside, right? And the plant seems to be on top of these structures. So, what are these structures? And is it some sort of an amphibious plant? The answer to both these questions is the root. So, in this video, let us dig deep to figure out why the roots appear in these different forms. Let's start with the basics. So, we have a plant, okay? And we know that the shoot system is the part of the plant that grows above the soil. We have the root system that grows below the soil. So, part of the plant which grows into the soil is called as the root. Now, what is the origin of the root in a plant? So, we are going to discuss about flowering plants. And we know that flowering plants come from seeds, right? So, let's take the example of a monocot uh, seed. And this is what a monocot seed looks like. And when the conditions are right, monocot seeds germinate and they give out these structures. And this particular structure that you see here at the bottom is called as a radical. Now, a radical is special because this is what gives rise to the root when you plant the seed. So, the radical grows into the root. The similar thing happens for a dicot seed as well. So, this is what a dicot seed looks like. And when the conditions are right, the seed germinates to give out this structure. This is the radical for a dicot seed after germination and the radical is going to grow into a root. Okay, irrespective of whether we take a seedling or we take a fully grown plant, we have seen that the roots have certain growth patterns and this growth pattern is based upon two main features. First is the genetics of the plant. So, we know the way an organism grows is depending on its genetics. It carries all the information regarding the organism, right? So, what the branches should look like, what the flowers are like, what the root is like, all these are decided by the genetics of the plant. The second feature which is important is the environmental adaptation. So, when a plant grows in a particular area for millions of years, right? So, there is change in the climate. So, as a result of that, there are changes in the soil conditions as well. So, all these environmental features have a huge role to play in what type of root a particular plant can have. Now, we have observed that whatever may be the plant, we can categorize their roots into two major types. So, I have shown you four pictures here, right? So, take a minute to observe them and see if you can group two of these roots together in one single category. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, let's see if you've gotten it right. If you had chosen the first and the third image, then you were right. So, these type of roots belong to the category called as the tap root system. Tap root system. Now, think about what kind of environmental conditions would have led to this root. So, we observe that this particular root system can grow deep into the soil. And it did this so that it was able to uh, find water. So, we have come to the conclusion that places that have water scarcity tend to have taproot system because then the roots can grow deep into the soil in search of the water, right? Now, let's take a closer look into the taproot system. So, in the taproot system, we have a primary root which is uh, broader near the base and it tapers as it moves towards the tip of the root. The primary root grows vertically down into the soil. It branches laterally to give secondary roots. So, secondary roots grow horizontally. Secondary roots further branch to give you tertiary roots. So, you can see that as they branch further and further, the size keeps on reducing. Tertiary root can further branch 
to give what is called as the rootlets. Tap roots are usually seen in dicot plants. These are some of the different forms in which tap root can occur in nature. Um, although in the first glance they look very different from each other, they are all the same uh, tap root systems. Here I have more examples. So we can see carrots and radishes have a tapering shape, but here we have a bulbous shape in the turnip, right? But if you look at how the roots are coming out of them, all of them follow the uh, pattern of tap root systems. Now the other two pictures. So these two belong to the category called as fibrous roots. Fibrous roots. It is observed that the dense network of these fibrous roots, they hold the topsoil together. Not only that, they don't grow deep into the soil, they just spread on the surface. These roots absorb surface water quickly. So we can come to the conclusion that places with uh, regular rainfall, the plants have these kind of root systems, regular rainfall. Now let's learn about the fibrous root systems in a little more detail. So actually fibrous root systems have a, a primary root growth, but this structure exists only for a very small period of time and then it is quickly replaced with these bunch of roots. So you notice that all of these individual root structures here, they are uniformly sized and shaped. This is very different from taproot where the primary root is the biggest of them all and then after that everything else becomes smaller and smaller as it branches. Um, fibrous root systems are usually seen in monocot uh, plants. And here we have examples of it. So we have the onion, here we have uh, banana stems. Although the roots are all very different in its size, the overall pattern here remains the same. All of them are uniformly shaped and they are growing out as a single bunch from the same spot near the stem. Now, there is uh, one more root system which uh, do not come under this particular category. So it's called as the adventitious root system. So, roots that arise from parts of the plant other than the radical come under the category of adventitious root systems. So, let's uh, try to understand this with some examples. So, here we have a banyan tree. Okay, so if you look at the uh, picture, we can see that there are multiple root like structures that are found around the main tree, right? Now, these roots are called as prop roots. And the origin of these prop roots are actually from these branches that have come from the main tree. Now, we know that banyan is a huge tree, right? And the branches are really heavy. So, it's difficult for the tree itself to handle or hold the branches. So, what happens is that these branches, they start giving out these uh, root structures. And these root structures go down in search of the soil. And once they reach the soil, they start growing like regular roots. And they help in holding and supporting the heavy branches of the banyan tree. Another example we have is of the monstera plant. Monstera is a common uh, house, indoor house plant. And we can see aerial roots in them. So, as such, the stem of monstera is not very sturdy. And therefore, a support is already given, right? And you can see these brown color um, uh, root-like structures. Uh, they are the aerial roots of monstera plant. The origin of these aerial roots is the nodes that are found on the stem. So here, here, etc. Now, the function of the aerial root in monstera is to give anchorage to the plant. So if you grow, uh, if you keep this plant near a wall or some sort of supportive structures, what would happen is that these aerial roots will cling onto the wall and it helps the plant to grow upright. Now, a second very interesting function is that it can directly absorb water from the uh, air around it. So absorb water. Now, coming back to the images we saw at the start of the video. So, these uh, living bridges of Meghalaya are the rubber fig trees. And these bridges are actually made out of the very flexible aerial roots of this particular tree. 
The origin of this aerial root is the stem and branches of the tree. Uh, locals, uh, they arrange the aerial roots in such a way that it forms a branch. Um, and the tree grows in that particular pattern, finally giving you a bridge-like structures. And then we have our amphibious plant, which is actually the mangrove tree. So, mangroves are usually found in regions where there is uh, the interface between sea and uh, land. And usually the areas are very, very marshy and it's very difficult for the um, plant to actually give roots into the marshy uh, soil and then grow upright. So, what it does is that it grows out these stilt roots. So, stilt roots um, originate in the nodes of the stem and they grow around the stem. And the uh, important thing to note here is that the roots can live very well underwater as well as above the water. Stilt roots help in supporting the overall structure of the uh, tree, similar to how you saw in the banyan. Although the root systems look very different from each other, there are certain common functions that we can um, attribute to all the roots that we see around us. The first function is that they uh, help in anchorage. So, um, uh, roots can hold on to the soil. Some of them can go deep into the soil while stay some on the surface. And it ensures that the plants are able to grow upright. Second function is that they absorb water and minerals from the soil. This is important because this serves as the basis um, on which the uh, plant produces food through photosynthesis. And then we have the storage function. So, when there is excess food left over from the uh, photosynthesis, the plants can store it uh, in different parts. So, one such part is the root. So, this is actually an example of a tapioca root. You can see that there are these uh, bulbous parts. These have actually swollen up because the plant is storing food in them. And the final function is that they can secrete plant growth regulators. So, another name for this would be hormones. So, we are already familiar with hormones in animals. These, these are regulatory molecules uh, that help with growth and other functions. So, similarly in plants, uh, these uh, compounds uh, can help the plant decide when it would flower, um, when the leaves would fall off from the tree, and a lot of functions like that.